What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, May 21st, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, drowning in sewage and dumping money into a climate rat hole. Super <laughs> interesting there. Next up, questions the debate moderators need to ask presidential candidates about America's energy plans. Next up, traders see weakening physical crude market. Very interesting. Um, we will cover that. And then finally, China's LNG imports continue to rise. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and ga gas markets today. And then we'll let you guys get out of here and get your day started. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start drowning in sewage. I love the title of this one. Drowning in sewage yep. and dumping money in a climate rat hole. Um, net zero. This is the tagline that's in the in the the subheading is net zero will have zero effect on the climate and threatens devastating consequences for the supply of affordable and reliable electricity. Michael, this one is really a great article, and uh, the Thames when you is filled with sewage, but yet it's a global problem. This is disgusting. Um, the company was fined 3.3 million pounds after causing the death of 1,400 fish with the release of millions of liters of untreated sewage. Um, the aging sewage infrastructure can't handle the demands of a growth population. Well, then stop the illegal migration is what I've got to say. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, in Bangladesh... Uh, the Link Rivers can capital can receive 60,000 cubic meter of waste from nine major industrial carriers. The river is so toxic that locals consider it biologically dead. In wow. New Delhi, the capital of India, the Yama, uh, Yamara River has been heavily affected by the disposal of harmful chemicals and untreated sewage. Michael, it seems to me that we would spend better time cleaning up renewable plastics, cleaning up uh, sewage, turn our waste to energy than it would be to go to net zero. Yeah, I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I think the other the climate change debate, in my opinion, is a lot of hand waving of look over here when there's a lot of other problems, you know, over here. You know, we didn't mention the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is one of the biggest dumping grounds in the entire, uh, you know, look that up. If you're if you're by a computer right now, Google um, Google the Great Pacific Garbage Patch absolutely will blow your and mind. And I talked to Dr. Patrick Moore about that. Uh, in my one of my two hour, I had two two hour podcasts with him. Mm. So uh, yes, uh, there is a lot, and then also Captain Kelly, uh, who is uh, a wonderful reach around the world for cleaning plastics out of the 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 world's ocean. He is a dynamo on doing that. So yeah. no, we... the point of all that is, I think this article does a great job of saying yes. well, the real issue and where, you know, where we're going to see much more universal health standard increases is by cleaning up a lot of the river pollution that's going on and not necessarily worrying about what's going on in the climate. Yes, obviously, we need to, you know, worry about, quote unquote, what's going on in the climate. But Bjorn Longberg talks about this. I mean, there are oh, yes. tons of other issues that come before climate change that we need to worry about this being one of them. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I, you know, climate change, man-made climate change does happen. Now, there's a whole argument on how that happens. But what can we do to affect life? and and everything else let's let's quit worrying about net yeah. zero and clean yeah. up our act uh let's go to the next one here michael questions the date debate moderators need to ask presidential candidates about their uh american energy plans a one of the questions should be are you alive uh <laughs> I, did I just say that? Um, yeah. Since all the hospitals, airports, and communications, militaries, planes, trains, and vehicles are all based on products made from fossil fuels, 
What is your plan to avoid a transition to lifestyles that existed before the 1800s? What a great question. You know, if we go to net zero and we ruin the energy policies, there's two different things. Another thing is electricity is not uh, um, petrochemical things made from petrochemicals. Uh, and so we have to sit back and take a look. Is it actually petrochemicals? Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, is it plastics? Is it life-saving drugs? Is it uh, a windmill cannot make a pharmaceutical drug? Does not happen. But you need oil and gas to make other things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, there's a great list of questions here. We could go through oh. and read all of them. Unfortunately, with CNN hosting the debate, then no one's ever going to ask this one, unfortunately. I think one of the key questions is, you know, you know, th there was this, you know, th there's one in the middle here with ongoing efforts to shutter coal-fired power plants, natural gas power plants, and nuclear power plants. How do you plan to support the needs for continuous, uninterrupted supplies of electricity? That's a question that should be asked. And maybe you could frame it more as baseload energy. That's the right. key to this whole thing. How are we going to keep having baseload energy? Exactly. Here's another question. How will electricity generated from wind and solar be able to support the materialistic demands of humanity or, uh, or before we chastise big oil for impacting climate change? Uh, I want to add one more thing to that. Uh, they're suing now big oil for climate change. You know, you got to be kidding me. All these lawsuits, the lawfare is going nuts on big oil. Yep. What's next? All right. Traders see a weakening physical crude my, uh, market. Uh, Michael, I have no idea anymore how to put a crystal ball on the pricing it right now. The Alliance is meeting June 1, OPEC Plus, to decide whether or not to roll over or start unwinding the cuts of about 2.2 million barrels per day. Um, everybody's seeing weak demand. China's imports are up. So yeah. every, you hear this one line over here saying, so goes the uh, China demand, so goes the world's price for oil. Well, the uh, next story is LNG uh, is up for uh, imports for China. I don't even know what to do. And then we had another tanker uh, uh, hit that was a Russian uh, shadow fleet tanker that was hit. I mean, you can't buy this kind of disruption. I What's it going to do to a price? Uh, what's the price right now? Uh, I mean, we'll cover that. Prices are still right above, right under 80 at 79 bucks. I, I mean, clearly we are seeing a weaker physical market, which has is a little bit different than, you know, the futures market. So I think we have to kind of separate the two. Yes. I think what's interesting is we've seen refinery utiliz utilizations haven't quite rebounded since the end of their planned maintenance season, which is one of the key indicators of a weaker physical market now you bring up a good point what's happening with the dark fleet all of that oil going into china some of that's not necessarily going to make the physical market which means if it's being routed directly there it can be a little bit lost in the shuffle we've also seen weaker deliveries of middle distillates uh distillates in uh europe and the united states uh the quote is um, that quote, there was enough to tip OECD oil demand in the first quarter back into contraction, according to our favorite agency, the IEA. Um, they also said that demand growth projections is now less than half of the growth OPEC expects this year. So there is a big dichotomy there. We'll be able at the end of the year, be able to go back and look at who is right, OPEC or the IEA. I have a feeling where I end up, um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see where it ends up. We do know that OPEC is keeping its 2024 and 2025 outlook for, quote, robust oil demand and they're going to leave that unchanged last month um, but we do know that um, here coming June 1st we are going to see OPEC meet again to determine whether or not they're going to keep the cuts of about 2.2 million barrels per day in place I have a feeling they will based off some of the stuff they're seeing here I mean they want $100 oil it's no way around it no uh, they do they've, they've all said we all want $100 oil yep what's next Hey, let's go to the China. Uh, China's LNG imports continued to rise. Uh, let's take a look at 
uh, during January through April, China imported 25.91 million tons of LNG, a rise of 22.7% year on year. This compares to 26.2 million tons China imported uh, in 2021. That's nuts. That's a lot of gas, baby. It that's is. Like, and that, that's you know, like you going to Taco Bell, baby. <laughs> Not anymore with inflation. But um, I think, you know, as I mentioned in the last segment, China is is really hitting hard imports of energy in an attempting to be energy independent. We already know they have a big stake in the Guyana field there. It's going to be very it's very apparent that as part of their uh, Belt and Road initiative that they are going to continue to increase imports. And if, you know, if there's ever a sign that they're considering moving to a quote unquote cleaner economy, it's the fact that they are purchasing a lot of LNG. Now they're also throwing up coal plants left and right. Um, but very interesting. I mean, you know, this article points out, you know, China's LNG import terminals are up 22.9% year over year. And in February, they rose by fifteen percent. Right. So it's it's all coming back. And and Japan imported seventeen point seven million tons through January. Uh, they were only down a little bit, uh, two point uh, two million uh, tons. They're down just a little bit, two million. What's a few million between friends? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> or trillion, you know. No kidding. You got anything else? Is that last of our stories? Uh, no, but hey, we still have uh, 209,615 people without power uh, in Houston. Yep. Unbelievable. Not good. And we will we will make sure, hopefully, everybody there has is, is continued to uh, continue to get that. Um, we'll cover the oil and gas markets in a second, guys. But first, we got to pay the bills here. As always, thanks for checking us out at the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com. All the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by that website. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business, go ahead and hit that description below for all the links to the articles, timestamps, and again, everything you need to know to stay in touch with the show. We appreciate everybody's support. Um, overall markets today, Sue, you know, very interesting. We saw the S and P 500, um, it is about uh, a 10th of a percentage point to the upside. NASDAQ up about a half a percentage point Two and 10 year yields, um, fairly flat up about a quarter of a percentage point for the two year 10 year up about a little less than half a percentage point dollar index, fairly flat. Um, we did see Bitcoin up 3.8 percentage point, 68,790 as it currently trades here. Uh, crude oil down about a half a percentage point, 79.21. Brent oil, 83.82. That's down about uh, a tenth of a percentage point. Um, and 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 really, what we're seeing is is this this interest rate and inflation beginning to affect the long term demand cycle. I mean, obviously, we saw you know the news of the Iranian president who died in the helicopter crash. Thank goodness that you know you know whether or not that's a uh, um, you know. Who knows what happened there? Hopefully that doesn't that doesn't mean there's a there's a broader war at large here. Obviously, the oil markets didn't think so, or we would have seen prices tremendously skyrocket. Um, you know, we did see Jerome Powell come out and say that, um, you know, specifically they're waiting, quote, for more signs that inflation is declining uh, before they're going to go ahead and start cutting interest rates. Cutting interest rates booms uh, sp should spur the economy, which means increasing that demand. We talked earlier about that weak physical market. If we can see, if we do get lower rates at some point, that does lean to the advantage of, hey, there, there might be some, um, there definitely is some, some demand pull here. Um, you know, we also... Um, what did we see here? Uh, you know, we're still, you know, in in the market is still what we in call uh, in what we call backwardation, um, which basically means that um, 
um, that, you know, instead of pulling oil out of storage now, basically means we're going to pull oil, store, oil out of storage now rather than store it and see if we can sell it at a future date. Um, the opposite of that would be Contango, where futures contracts are actually worth more than the front month, which means we're better off storing it than selling it. We also did see natural gas continue to, to, to rise. It's up five percentage points, or about 4.6 percentage points, $2.74. Again, mainly on the back of as we, as we are a little bit under supplied in terms of where our storage numbers are at and we continue to see large uh, or or as we move into the summer and, and, and heat and cooling demand comes up it could be very interesting um, to see where prices go could we get above that three dollar mark where we start seeing some more uh, we start seeing some more you know obviously we haven't necessarily seen a drawdown in natural ga gas rigs too much but the real question is will we see an increase as companies look to capitalize on, on some of these 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 what they call TILs or turn in lines that they've pushed off of and and sitting on a bunch of ducks it's going to be very interesting to see where companies like EQT Chesapeake um, and the likes of them continue to go outside of prices today much going on today is a fairly chill day for a Monday which was great um, you know what, what should people be worried about coming up this week well just Always be ready for uh, thunderstorms and uh, have a power plan, have a plan, have a 72-hour bag, be able to survive. The government will not be there to help you. No, they definitely um, will not be there, guys. We appreciate everybody checking us out here on the World's Greatest Podcast. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We're going to let you go again out of here, guys. Until tomorrow. Wait, you a solo show tomorrow, right, Stu? Absolutely. So you unfortunately you'll be stuck with Stu. I will be back in the chair for Thursday and we will let you guys uh, have a great week. Thanks guys.